Buenas tardes a todos. Comenzamos, comenzamos ya la primera ponencia de la tarde, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, vamos a escuchar a Thomas Bertrand. Eh, Thomas Bertrand viene desde París, eh, Francia. Tenemos el placer de escucharle, representante del paciente de enfermedades raras, miembro de la Junta de la Asociación Francesa del Síndrome de Red y presidente de la Asociación Europea del Síndrome de Red, que además eh, es padre también de, de una niña con síndrome de Red. Thomas. Thank you very much. So first I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to um, uh, present the work on Red Syndrome. Uh, Red Syndrome Europe has been uh, working through this year and, and, the, and the next year. Um, my name is Thomas Bertrand. Uh, as Yolanda said, I'm com I come from Paris. Um, I have... It doesn't work? It, it doesn't work? Okay. Por favor, a quien no le funcione, eh, tenemos a los técnicos allí en el fondo y quizá ellos nos puedan ayudar. No, no hay, ¿Nadie oye nada? Uh, ¿Se la siesta? Ah, habla un poquito, Tomás. La siesta. <ríe> siesta. Los técnicos están de siesta. <ríe> habla un poquito para... Ah, bueno, espera.
to come in. Okay, so do you hear me? I have a daughter with red syndrome. She's just turned 11 years old. Do you get the translation? Okay. <laughs> the title of my talk is Our Red Future, Share, Care, and Cure. So Red Syndrome Europe, or REC, it's a, it's a federation of associations, and it's driven by board members, and here are the four current board members. We have Caroline, who is representing the French Red, Red Syndrome Association, but Caroline is also a member of the Belgium Red Syndrome Association and also the Dutch Red Syndrome Association. We have Yvonne Milne from Red UK, uh, Daniela Sili, who is uh, the, uh, from the Hungarian uh, Red Syndrome Association, or treasurer Wilfried Astalter from the German Red Syndrome Association, and myself from the French Association as well. So the statutes of Red Syndrome Europe were approved in 2001 in Budapest, and there are five main aims that will go through all of them. Aim number one is to make Red Syndrome better known to the public, professionals, carers, and those who are directly concerned in all European countries. The second aim is to improve the communication within the European Red community. Aim three, to promote as a representative European organization, the interests of people with Red Syndrome and families. And number four it was to expand Red Syndrome Europe to all European countries and to assist, if necessary, in the creation of national associations. And number five, to promote research into Red Syndrome. So I will go during my presentation all through the five aims, but they can be uh, split into sub subdomains like to share to care and to cure, the title of my talk. So let's start with to share. The first aim is to make Red Syndrome uh, better known to the public, professional carers, etc. And here I want to uh, give an, a very good example uh, of uh, what national associations do very well. And um, I will start with um, the family days where I was invited uh, in the Catalan uh, Red Day in Barcelona in 2016. And during that day, patient representatives, researchers, medical doctors, directors of medical centers, and officials from the Ministry of Health gathered in front of around 80 parents on site and hundreds connected via live stream to connect families in Spain and other Spanish-speaking families around the world. So one part of the conference was focused on the place uh, of Red Syndrome in the landscape of the European Reference Network, and I will come later on that. And the second part was a day focused on the situation and research on Red Syndrome Europe, on Red Syndrome, sorry. So we, in, in Europe, there are many, um, uh, the different European associations, they also have family days. They have weekends, and they invite all the families together, and they invite professionals. It's really common. But what's not common is to have during one day not only the doctors and, and the scientists, but also the directors of the centers and the politics. And this is what you do here in, in Spain and, and in Catalonia. And today is a very, very good example that I want to, to, I wish that all associations in Europe follow the same example. Again, and, uh, and, and under the aim number one to make Red Syndrome uh, better known to the public, we are currently working on a project called Red Resource. And, and we initiated a project gathering information on a large panel of different topics under the form of Red UK's Family Companion. Uh, the Family Companion from Red UK is like a book. Uh, it's a booklet with a spiral, and uh, you have different topics uh, in alphabetical orders. They are very, uh, they are simply written so that the parents can understand, the professional and the professional can understand, and you can carry carry it uh, in your bag uh, whenever you want, whenever you meet new professionals that don't, who don't know about Red Syndrome. It, it aims at families and doctors to have minimum information, hints about the disease and what to do depending on the situation. This is not like a medical guidelines per se. It's, it should stay as simple, as light as possible. And it's not written by Red Syndrome Rob by professionals around Europe, carefully chosen by RSC representatives. So if you want to have an idea of what we want to start from, I brought with me this family companion, and you have everything you want uh, from hydrotherapy, hypersensitivity, it's, it's sorted by alphabetical orders, what to do when you have epilepsy, who to go, what to do, 
and I think this is something we want to uh, we want to have for all European countries, but not only written by uh, uh, British uh, British professionals. We will take the best of all countries. So I will pass it, and you can you can have a look while, while I'm, I'm continuing to. So uh, M number two is um, to um, to improve the communication within the European Red Community. Obviously, we communicate very well with computers. Uh, we are sending a lot of emails, and these are these are the 2016 figures. I've written more than 250 emails, and I'm I'm not um, uh, uh, I'm not the secretary of of the the, the association. So uh, I guess Daniela is writing twice more of me of me. We have a uh, redsyndrome.eu website where last year we had m more than 1,000 visitors where we publish news and events. We have this Eurodis um, social network called Rare Connect where all uh, the patients of Red Syndrome, uh, a patient's representative, they can chat with each other, write articles, and it's translated into uh, eight different languages English, Spanish, German, French, Italian, Portuguese, Russian and serbo Croatian recently. And we are pretty much Facebook friendly. We have a public and private page and we have an average of 300 uh, average views per post. And it was a peak last year, one, 1, more than 1,000 views in July. Um, again, uh, to improve red communication, we actively contribute, or contributed, and we continue to contribute to international events. On Red Syndrome, we discuss, during Congresses, we discuss the choice of topics. Like sometimes in, in the Congress, you have the parents session and then the, and then the scientific sessions. And in Rome, uh, in 2015, we had a chance to participate and give ideas on topics, both on the parents and on the expert session. We should not forget that as parents, we are sort of the most experts in the disease, in a way. Uh, we can discuss the choice of speakers and, and uh, um, eventually we can help financially. financially. Uh, we invited a, a speaker in Rome, we, can, we paid luncheons and we also in, um, invited representatives to participate to the congresses, especially uh, the, re the associations from Eastern Europe, who don't, they don't have a lot of money so we can financially support a bit when they want to uh, participate to such international congresses. Now, to care, it's the aim number three, uh, is to promote as a representative European organization the interest of people with Red Syndrome and families, which means that we need to have an external influence and advocacy. Having Red Syndrome Europe officially in the network of European institutions to raise awareness in Red Syndrome, because there are a lot of rare diseases. And Red Syndrome Europe is a member of EURDIS, the European Organization for Rare Disorders, which allows RSC to vote as a general assembly of EURDIS during the European Congress of Rare Diseases and Orphan Products. And this year we had Daniela, uh, who went to Budapest. She lives in Budapest, that was quite handy. And she went in May 2017 to, uh, to the EURDIS, to uh, general assembly meeting and, and European Congress. Since we are um, Eurodis members, we have access to Eurodis tools and things. And you know, Eurodis is organizing every year a training a training course called the Summer School. Uh, it takes place in Barcelona, and uh, they pay everything. Everything is paid, and it's uh, it's they discuss. The title is the Capacity Building Program for Patient Representatives and Researchers on Information and access to orphan, pediatric, advanced therapies, and health technology assessment. It basically, it is, they discuss uh, with parents on how to access drugs, uh, what are clinical trials, uh, how companies put drugs on the market, and what are the regulations. It's very, very interesting. It's all free. And since, uh, and since the Catalonia uh, uh, Red Syndrome Association is Spanish, the, uh, you are a member of RSE, you, you can have access, just come to me and you can have everything free for a weekend in Barcelona. I think it's, it's worth it. And uh, the application starts in, from September for next year's summer school. Uh, I forgot to say that in 2016, we had a representative from the Lithuanian uh, Red Syndrome Association and Pedro Rocha from the Catalan Association participated in, in 2016. 
Uh, we also participate in Eurodis task force. One is called the DITA uh, for Drug Information and Transparency Access uh, Task Force. Daniela is a DITA member. It's basically a group of patients or patient representatives um, who are giving opinion in the area of product information transparency and of the regulatory process uh, and access to medicines. And, and as patients, we give opinions to the one Eurodis member, and then this Eurodis member goes to London at the European Medicine Agency, the EMA, and they give uh, our opinion as patients on drugs, on transparency, on regulation, etc. I think it is very important that the patient's voice is even at European level when, when the drugs are marketed. But we're also directly involved at the EMA in another um, sort of group called the Scientific Advisory Group Meetings, and Daniela is part, is part of this group. To make, to make things simple, uh, from time to time when, when a pharma company wants to uh, put a drug on the market, they, had to, uh, they definitely had to ask the EMA uh, if they want to um, regi register it in Europe. But from time to time, before they register, the company can ask the patients what they think about it. They give their opinions on such or such problematic or on such problem, uh, project, and they ask the EMA and, and this group, they listen to the questions to the, from the pharma, pharma company and then discuss all together. This is undisclosed and, and I myself, I don't know what they're talking about because this is kept secret, but I think it's very important to have this relationship between the pharma companies, between the regulatory agencies and between the patients. And we are looking to have a red syndrome representative in these processes. Now, the big thing nowadays is our European reference network. So what is it? It's a, it came from uh, the European call for, um, for research called Horizon 2020 or H2020. So you know in every country, I think you've been discussing that uh, this morning, in every country you have centers. They are called red centers, they are called centers of expertise, they are called uh, multidisciplinary centers, and um, they are very well equipped and they know very well when disease. And now Europe wants that all these centers, they gather all information between them. They want to share information, what's good in Spain, what's good in England, etc., etc., and they want to create a network, and these are called the European Reference Network. And there are 24 European reference networks that were created. And Red Syndrome is in one of them, and it's called, now it's called ITAC ITACA. It stands for Intellectual Disability Telehealth and Congenital Anomalies. So you will see later that uh, in this ERN there are plenty of other rare diseases who will come later, but including Red Syndrome. And we have the very, very chance that uh, since last year, uh, Yvonne Milne uh, from the Red RSC board was elected as an EPAG member to be, to be represented in the board of this ERN. So it's very lucky because we will have the red syndrome very well represented again in this big network that is starting. It's, she was elected by Eurodis, but the ERN really started in June this year. It's brand new. So this is the mission statement uh, from this ERN called ITACA. It was uh, written by Professor Jill Clayton Smith. Uh, she is the coordinator, she's a doctor coordinator at the University of Manchester in UK. And this is what she writes. We seek to provide a patient-centered network which will meet the needs of those with rare congenital malformation and intellectual disability syndromes, both diagnosed and undiagnosed. We will provide an infrastructure for diagnosis, evidence-based management, and collection of secure patient data. Members of the network will share best practice and disseminate guidelines to optimize and improve coordination of patient care. We will facilitate training and capacity building in field, be active and collaborative researchers, and work towards development of diagnostic tests and future therapies. And you will see that all the words that I've put in bold, they, are all, they fit all very well with the different aims uh, uh, from the status of uh, Red Syndrome Europe. Five minutes? Okay, so very good. And the, um, there are actually 38 centers participating, including 14 member states, and there are other centers that have expressed interest. 
So here, what are the diseases? Uh, I will not go through, uh, through all of them. There are many diseases represented in Itaqua. Uh, they are bundled into groups, but there are also uh, many individual disorders, like rare chromosome disorders, including uh, microdeletion syndromes, chromatin disorders, neurodevelopmental neuro disorders, like red syndrome, craniofacial disorders, rare intellectual disabilities, overgrowth, etc., etc. What I want to say is that in this European reference network, there are so many diseases. So how red syndrome will not be um, diluted into all these diseases? I've already mentioned it late, uh, earlier. I, I don't want to enter into the, all these details, but this is the oper operational structure. There is there, there is a group, patients and lay groups and here, there will be a lot of patients representative from all the diseases I've been mentioning. And we, for Red Syndrome, we have Jenny Becker from Red UK, who will, be, who will be representing us. But in the board, where all the doctors are and all the professionals they will discuss together, there's, there is also one EPAC URDIS member. And she is Yvonne Min from Red Syndrome Europe. So it's a very, very, we're very, very lucky to have Red Syndrome at the board of this U European Reference Network because you will always have this red syndrome in, in their mind when, when taking decisions. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a very good uh, strength, str strength. So what now? There are two initiatives where we are directly involved. One is the patient care guidelines, and we are currently working on recent official French health guidelines on red syndrome, trying to make it translated in a lot of different languages. And patient registries, and there is a new bid uh, from Professor Alessandra Renier, Renieri from uh, Italy, who is coordinating an application on Itaqua behalf. Uh, and this uh, involves harmonization of different types of register and concentrate on patient-entered data as final pathway. The aim number four of uh, our statutes is to expand RSC to European countries and assist if necessary in the creation of national associations. And up to now, we have 42 family associations or family contacts. I say family contacts because in some countries, we only found one family. And we're still looking for people in Albania, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. Now to cure, I've already discussed about the, the cure in the part where I was mentioning uh, the ERN. ERN. But I have to mention the fact that from a very, very long time, we were involved in the European Red Syndrome Network database. It's a global database. It has been published in the literature, which gathers all information and most of the information from all the different national uh, databases uh, in Europe. And, um, and I will uh, read through uh, the, what was in the publication. The aim of this project is to connect the already existing databases and to create unified repository. The data will be accessible to the participants and to the scientific community according to rules to ensure transparency and equity. This international effort will be of great value in order to perform genotype, phenotype correlations, to study modifier genes, and to select subgroups of patients for clinical trials. So this database uh, is there for, since a very long, for a very long time. Um, you can have a look, there is a link. We have a representant, we have Pedro Rocha from the Catalonian Associ uh, Association who is part of the board and who is uh, reporting to us. This the database has flaws, it has some problems uh, and we, this is the reason why there's this bid from Italy uh, to raise money to uh, improve it and to implement it uh, and, and to make it better. But it's still work in progress. And finally, uh, the M number five was still uh, to promote research into red syndrome. We are at the Horizon 2020 uh, European calls, but we are still working on the previous European call, which is called FP7. And not, not, we, there are two projects of modeling small populations, and we have uh, Gérard Nguyen, who is the former uh, red syndrome Europe president who participates uh, as an advisory board. And RSC is also registered as official, as official org organization, so we can be, um, we can have projects within the IFACA ERN, we can have projects uh, outside, but we can even run our, our research projects. So with that, I just want to uh, make sure that I can see you, all of you in the next European Congress in Berlin in November. There will be a big session on the transition from childhood to adulthood. This is very, very important. Uh, because, you know, 50% of the red girls are actually not girls, but women. 
there are adults now. And there's this transition, it's very difficult, and it brings uh, new problematics, but also new solutions. And uh, I'm sure we'll learn a lot from this Congress. And for that, I thank you very much for your attention.